Let's start with a prayer. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for God rest day to talk about you. Help us to learn more about you and close to you day by day. Thank you entirely. We can trust this conversation into the hands of our mother as we say. Hail Mary, Mary full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A couple of uh, small things. One is next Monday's Memorial Day. And it doesn't matter to me either way, but people are going to be here next Monday? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are yeah. 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 you going anywhere? Yes. Are you going somewhere? Yeah. So, so, is it okay to have class next Monday? Or the dogs? And we'll have that. But be here. It's entirely your decision to spark this up. Who, who would like to have to take the day off for next Monday? I'm going to do it on Monday. Who would like to meet next Monday? All right. Meet next Monday, then. Very good. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel. Too over here. He can't tell me to go down. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, now you have to go. Yeah. Well, take it off. Uh-huh. Now, today is a, a little, little class. We're going to cover a few verses. But I want to cover them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a lot of material here, most of their quotes will be the speech group. We'll be okay. <laughs> but I want to cover this in detail because of the fact that this is one of the verses that have been used the last 500 years. As a propaganda piece, truth is not scientific against truth and is bad. And so I, there's, you'll find that, I think, historically, the three main charges against the church will always look particularly brought up Inquisition, the Crusades, and Galileo. Um, Inquisition, the Crusades, we can talk about some other points, but I'm going to talk about Galileo later today. Uh, because honestly, the story is not quite what people think it is. Um, is it still a great story? No. It's, it's kind of silly. <laughs> but we'll see that. Uh, but I think it's what's worth going into exactly what happened with him. Exactly what the stance actually is. And that's what some of these contentions against the church um, in the Catholic world. And so, yes, the speaking of this is a little bit different than most of our classes. It's not purely a biblical, more of a historical survey. 16th century. I think it's important to use. Uh, but do you want to start with the actual story and the biblical reasons and the actual spiritual cycle for getting into confidence? So that's the clue. We're just going to brief with the actual story. So in the book of Joshua, this is the story of conquest, the story where Joshua, on the orders of God, is going through the territory. He's conquering the people. This is for the purpose of limiting you, the purpose of purifying the land, the purpose of separating God's people from the rest of the world so that they don't get contaminated by heresy and by idolatry. Um, and so, so Joshua's talking. In Joshua chapter 10, you have the story of the five Amorite kings. The Amorites occupy the day, the central portion of Israel. Um, each city had its own king. So you might today consider it there wasn't a really a centralized government of the Amorites, uh, but we think of a kingdom today. Um, each city has its own kingdom. Um, and, and they were Amorites by nationality and by culture, not by one centralized government. Uh, so, but, so each little city has a little kingdom, you could say. But they were brothers. They were all relatives, they were all allies. The five Amorite kings. See what's going on. Hear about the fall of Jericho, another Amorite city. Hear about so their conquests and their terror. So they gather together and they make a pact. They're going to attack one of the allies of Joshua. Attack the city of Gideon. 
The story of Gibeon becoming the allies of Joshua is found in Joshua chapter 9. They uh, pretend to be foreigners coming into uh, long way, very poor, and they tell Joshua, basically Gibeon knows that God is powerful and comes to conquer him. And so Gibeon goes to Joshua and says, so we're just, we're just we're poor travelers, we've traveled so far away, our shoes are in tatters, so the bread are moldy, the next door. <laughs> and they say, please support so pack to protect us and, and you know, we'll be your friends and allies. Doc says, okay. And he finds out the next door. After they made a cover of that. So, so Gibeon knows the which side of, of their bread and the butter. Um, and when they were attacked by these five Amorite kings, Gibeon goes to Doc and they and Joshua does. And Joshua seeks the Lord, and the Lord says, Don't fear these five kings. I'll be with you. We have a great victory. <clears throat> and the victory is described as first there is a rout, there is a battle there. Israel wins. And as the five armies are fleeing, the great hailstorm which kills more people than the soldiers do. So, what was the question? But Joshua chapter 10, verse 12 to 14, is the controverted uh, place. Then spoke Joshua to the Lord in the day before the day of the Arabs, over to the man of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, the sun stand not still given, and the moon stand still in the valley of Ajwan. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, the mountain, and they shook them as other animals. This is not written in the book of Joshua. I don't know, is it? I don't know if it's about. <laughs> but apparently, it's never about. This is not written in the book of Joshua. The sun stayed in the midst of the heavens and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. There has been no day like it before or since. And the Lord talked the voice of man. The Lord thought first. So for a whole day, the sun stands still. So this is the miracle of the sun. There is a story of the British diplomat, Winston Churchill, during World War II, when there was a meeting of the arm of the soldiers, and uh, the diplomat for, for the for the Portuguese king came okay, and compared to his king in this meeting to the sun and how it was like the sun, he shone in the heavens, he let everyone around him. And the French diplomat came and spoke about the French king, and he was like the moon and he had light in the darkness. And Mr. Church stood up and said, Well, you took a sign of the moon from me, so I give you Joshua. It's not a standstill. What is the spiritual meaning of it? What's the lesson for us? The second one. And the first is that God works miracles on behalf of his people. God comes and takes care of his people, walks over them, and fights them. This is God caring for his creation. God intervening on behalf of those who care for him. Who him. God comes and he steps in. God comes and he walks with his people. Um, this is important. Because what this does is it says that, in a clear way, that in reality, spiritually speaking, humanity is at the center of creation. You can see this is contentious for Galileo and for the time. Um, we'll that a little later. Man is the center of creation. The universe is made for man. And so, so the Lord is willing to abandon the rules of nature in the service of man. The service of salvation, the service of redemption. And all of this whole story is God redeeming, is the story of made history. God coming to us, redeeming us. Bringing us back to himself. And so because human beings are the point of creation, the sun is the point of creation, this is the, now is the moon, nor is the earth, but it's human beings, whom God loves and prays on and enlightens. You have here the sun bends to that, points to that, shows that God will work miracles for his people. But again, you have the story where you have Human beings are the center, what God is, but those are certain, certain 
physically speaking, the creation, the the center of physical creation. You have here again also the same story of God's word against the evil. And the transformation of sin, right, the same territory that become that is, is this, this pagan center becomes the center of Jewish faith. One of these five kings is in a town called Jerusalem. Have you heard of this town before? <laughs> you know, the other four are also famous cities that take place. The other one, for example, is Hebron, which is where King David rules before he becomes king of Jerusalem. Um, there, there's three other cities as well. They're, they're all the center of Israel. And so when God comes and he conquers this territory, not only is he, he's transformed the territory, right? This is the place of the dedicated to false gods. When they sacrifice children to these gods. And God will come to the territory, is, is wiping it out, cleansing the land, and dedicating it to himself. So this whole story that is a story of God coming to save his people, God coming to leave his people, God warring against sin and evil, talk about this last time more detail, and God coming back to transform that place, the place of worship and salvation and sanctification. A beautiful story. Questions on this? Let's get into the gallery. <laughs> they said, you know, there really are these three big whipping boys, legends of the little captain, Galilee and one of them. You'll find it in the day. Let me just kind of a very um, briefly read a quick three quotes here. There are many more than all. Uh, before we actually talk about what actually happened. This is from Time Magazine, 2010. Galileo's only crime was to claim that the earth had all around the sun. That was enough cause for the Catholic Church to Christian Galileo. The Vatican condemned Galileo in 1633. This is the first of you who's been in high science for any other sake. Galileo, the fact that he lived in a house for the rest of his life. And you have here, it's the history channel. The church decided to give the sun and ground the earth an absolute fact of scripture, prophets you. Despite the fact that science in over a century here was not centered in the earth. On June 22nd, 1923, the church had the following order. You pronounce judgment of the new Galileo, but yourself vehemently suspect the schooly office of heresy. Is having the leap from the doctrine falls to contrary to the scriptures, the sun is center of the earth, from east to west. The earth does move at the center of the world. <clears throat> Along with the origin of the fallen hell, where that by public edict, the book of dialogue of Galileo and Galilee should be prohibited, and condemned in prison of this holy office that are a little better. As a parent, you were joined on the age for the space of three years, for sight once a week. The seven pen of songs. That lived in 300 years. Not the great piece of heresy more than anyone, but not the rest. I think more than 300 years the church to admit Galileo's writing the theory of heresy. Or you had the University of Sussex, a British church, but this on the LA. The Catholic Church in the 17th century was an important aspect of the European mind. And the ability for anything that, that better than it, never do so again. Okay, maybe not. Galileo only committed philosophy to their irritating the church for a people that did the reading before the other scientists were friends. The Catholic Church said Galileo did not be a devoted Catholic and a scientist at the same time. Galileo's theory that the earth was all world on the sun and reason to believe this theory was true. He developed this at a telescope. He was sure he was right on the whole of the double, but there was a problem in the church. <laughs> <laughs> the Catholic Church believed the earth did not move in the center of the universe. The church on the other is a heretic, it's not stopped by the Irish Spanish heresies. The Inquisition. <laughs> no one suspects the Inquisition. Found these letters and were angry. The Pope on the Atlantic will court here. Which book? This would be Urban VIII, but look at that. 
Got up and tested. He was tested saying he's too old for travel. We're all in the Turkish system. He goes from place to torture Galileo unless he admitted he was wrong. He was forced to confess his mistake in the theory of it. And once it first, it went on this plane to him that he said in his life, they agreed to confess. He was scored out of the courtroom and he be heard by one of his breath, you're a thuzzle. And he does this on him. The punishment for the publication of his book called Dialogue on the Great World Systems, so we got his Boston series, and they was on guard at all times, not allowed to leave the company. The man is not stood aside for it, so this way, and died of health in 1642. A of things that you will see about the church in Galilee. And so, what do we put forward of the claims, then, based upon the story? That one, this proves, is, this, is the claim, that the church is not infallible. How could the church condemn Galileo and that was correct? And still be held, still be held. Still be held. Therefore, the church can't be held. Right, so this, is, this is a very silly thing the church is saying. Oh, and therefore, they, the, the church proved itself stupid on all, all matters with religion, because now we know better because we're so much smarter now. Does this mean, therefore, that the church is anti-science, is backward, doesn't like the truth, stuck in their own ways? You have, for example, in 1992, John Paul II gave a formal apology of what happened to Galilee. As if so there was a lot of articles written in Sahasi, took only 300 years you know, for the church that they are wrong, to go backwards they are. Let's look at these more later. I'll start with this one first. Uh, this one, when we look at the actual story of the history first, we'll go into that. But let's look at the question of anti science. I gave you here a list of priest scientists who are fathers of the disease. A couple things to note about this. So to be a father of a scientific field means you propose it, or, or it's very key to developing it, um, or found it very carefully the first one. Um, that scientific discovery isn't linked. Right, and people will discover things in different types at the same time, different areas. And, and so it's not an official list. Uh, I did this list from the sources, and it's made up the top of my head. But you'll find different sources that will say different things. Um, I was kind of used up with Wikipedia. Wikipedia has two different lists, two different, different, different names. So, <laughs> you know, but yes, yeah, Wikipedia is what we can do. So some of these fathers, there are, are multiple fathers in the same field. When you look at these names, um, you'll find these titles supposedly. You'll find these titles given to them. The dark titles I gave them are titles given to them by the scientific community. And again, these are all scientists or priests. Not just and they're scientists or fathers in their field. So it's this is this famous priest scientists who are important in their fields to be a lot longer. Pages and pages and pages and pages. And Catholic scientists would be much, much, much more than that. So again, these are priests, or scientists, or good Catholics. Um, one is a blessed, one is another saint. Um, and the other ones were importing their fields. So Roger Bacon. Um, he did. He did. <laughs> Along with Jim Hayes. <laughs> uh, he's perhaps the most controversial big figure on Hughes because his philosophy and theology were the man. But anyway, he's a scientist. <laughs> and he is credited with coming up with the sign of Matt, 13th century, right? The church, the church held sweat. Uh, you had Martin Marsan, who was the father of acoustics, developed some of the principles of, of harmonics and music theory. 
He also is famous among mathematicians for developing what are called the Mars Sen prime numbers, which are a bit beyond me because I don't know what talk about So if you're a mathematician, yes, look them up and have fun. Um, this is Kircher. He's the father of the Republic, or the master of 100, 100 arts. He's also the earliest to describe microbes. Um, microbes have just been invented, in order to do so, and he actually proposed at the time that these microbes and germs were sorts of disease. Uh, kind of prove it. The science had developed far away. But at that time, in the 1670s, whenever he looked at that, uh, he was already opposed to saying that they were the cause of disease. This became very important for the germ theory. Uh, but he's known for being a historian who follows. Uh, less than Nicholas Seaman, the bishop. Uh, he is the father of geology and the stratigraphy. He is the one who was studying fossils. Uh, the whole theory of stratification of, 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 the, universe, of, the, of the world. Um, if we still use the date, the world, the date, the fact, the older rocks were older, was from Bishop Sino. He was also an important opponent of anatomy. Someone studied anatomy. The doctor, see, there are like three, I think there's three or four glands and body parts of that And it's a Stenson gland or a Stenson muscle. Then that Nicholas Stanley. Mm -hmm. um, Francisco Lamadi Kersi, father of aviation, and some of the earliest works on, uh, on flying. Arnold Boscovich, the father of atomic theory, seven names. Rene Kuss Wade, the father of crystallography, take pictures of the atomic structure of crystals. Angelo Obsession, the father of astrophysics. Classify the stars. Came up with a way to classify them according to the brightness. He was an early uh, worker in meteorology and he was a bachelor of tools that required a clarity which is still used to this day. Gregory Mendel, the father of genetics, first one proposed his God systems. And of course, George de Martray, one of the fathers of modern cosmology and the inventor of the Big Bang Theory. All priests, all scientists. Of course, the church is anti-science. <laughs> Another thing to point out, too, is again, today, one of the great observatories in the world is run by the Vatican. The run by the Vatican is kept by the Vatican Observatory, is one of the great observatories. You actually have a, during your job, you have a telescope that you that. One of the premier of the world. Yeah. Kippy. What was that? Kippy, too. The second, the heavy the back. My brother used to work there. Oh, yeah. Are you still living in that area? You know where it is. You've been there. Yeah. Nicholas of Cusa, Nicholas Copernicus, and Joanne Kepler, all the great astronomers, were all Catholics. All of them proposed the this is a theory all of that in the living literature. So you had the fact that you have these other great scientists, recognized for the scientists, who all hold the same theory as Galileo. And they were not condemned in the church. So, you know, Galileo was. Galileo died of old age and died of the Catholic. Two of his daughters were not. Um, so Galileo was not anti Catholic. Galileo was not against the Pope. What, that's what actually happened. So again, anyone who says the church is not a scientific has no deal with hope, has never studied history. Um, that's sort of the timeline of what happened. In the 15th century, Nicholas of Cusa began to look at the world and began to propose a theory that had already been taught of the Greeks, the Pythagoreans. Um, and he said that he believed, based upon the earth, based upon the study of nature, that the earth stood still, the sun revolved around the earth. A bit of that, right? around. But the sun stood still, and rolled around the sun. And although was he not condemned, he was named Carter. He was a big like. He was someone who traveled the world, speaking on behalf of the Pope, 
and that is biblical. Uh, but he was the one who revived it in the long times. How long after Galileo was condemned did he? He was before Galileo. He was before Galileo? He was 20 years before. Oh, okay. How so many years before? About 200 years before. Um, I, have, I believe he was in the 1440s. Galileo was in the 1660s. Over the time. And he was a cardinal. He was a priest and a cardinal. He didn't make the list above there because uh, he was the father of Anna. He just revived the theory. Um, Niccolo Copernicus, a little later, um, also began to oppose the theory and taught it, looked at it. He had minor orders. Um, so he was not a priest. He would have been a subdeacon. There are some theories that came a priest after this book was written. Um, there's no proof of it. What is known is that he was a doctor, a physician. Uh, he was a doctor. He, 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 he was a canon lawyer and a doctor. And he, he, he would give his way his service for free. He served the poor and, and helped the poor for free, um, keeping them healthy. But he got involved with astronomy, he got involved with some of the studies, proposed his theory, and he dedicated his book to Pope Paul III. And he already anticipated the question was, does this then make the scriptures wrong? The scriptures say, for example, the sun stopped in the heavens. Does this make the scriptures wrong? No, he said, no, that's not what's being said here. It's not the point of the book here, the point of the scriptures. Anyone who will look at this and say that they, they don't match or are radical and is missing the whole point, this is not even more refuted as it says. And this was 70 years before Galilee. And there's a problem. And at this point, um, basically, this was one of those theories that was out there, was kind of popular. Um, I would say it's probably like you know some of the quantum mechanics theory we have today, where these, these guesses by scientists, where they're out there, kind of popularized. There's not really much evidence for it. I mean, that people want to make because they, they, anyway, this is popularized. Um, and there's evidence for and against. That's kind of where things were when our good buddy. Galileo came on the scene. Sixteen ten in Florence. Galileo, after making some writing and astronomy, becomes a professor. He's a great scientist. He is a um, a great inventor. He is very important in, in certain fields. He was the one who wants to observe the uh, mechanics of. Mechanics, uh, like on the term shoot. The pendulum ocean is the one where they experience the pendulum and some stuff with uh nothing of that. So he is a, a very large man. He's also very stubborn and very bitter. <laughs> like many people very close are. Um, and he is so convinced he's always right that he will attack people very harshly and very bluntly whenever they are fighting. And it's really He's a very clever man, and so he's known for these very bitter, very um, witty attacks of the phones. And so he's a teacher, he's a professor, he's a writer, he's a scientist, but he makes a lot of enemies. And the first thing you have to about Galileo is he's stubborn. <laughs> and he makes his enemies easily. He's kind of the Shoot first, I'll later, kind of guy. In 1613, he begins writing about Copernicus. He's convinced it's correct, this is right. Again, there's no proof. He has great friends. Some of the cardinals are his buddies. Uh, the future urban the, the eighth. 
Um, so I'm just good friends. You, he's, he has a patient with Sarah Bell. Uh, he makes a big name for himself. Where he gets in trouble is at a dinner party with one of the Orange Doctors named Christina. And he begins to write a couple letters that he publishes, a little tracts. And in these letters, only does he say that the Hebrew centric model was correct. Now, they're called letters, but they're, but they're more like little tracks. You know, they, they, are, they are written at her investigation. She wrote she, at the best of the dinner party, writes the two of them are public letters. Right? They aren't private letters, they're public letters, they're published, and, you know, so they're letters that are best for Sina. Uh, but they are publicly known, publicly public. And then not only does he say he thinks he was right, but he basically starts to do is he begins to um, interpret the Bible and theology. It says, anyone who's going to agree with me are idiots. Those who don't listen to me don't talk about. Um, only I'm correct. And anyone who says the Bible's otherwise are wrong or heretics. It's a bit too far. <laughs> um, and again, you already have this fact over here. You're talking about enemies. This becomes an excuse. So this is controversy. One of his friends, the Cardinal, a few people from the eight, says, be careful to calm yourself down. And he doesn't. The future of St. Arbellerman is one of the most influential particles of time. Time, Christ says. He says, I say, if real truth be found, and the sun is fixed, and there's not a wall around the earth, the earth around the sun, the necessary very carefully, which doesn't have any scripture, it's a great contrary. We should be said, we should have to say, we must have understood them rather than to say that they are being false when it's been proven. In other words, what Bellerman says is, don't say the Bible's wrong, say we're wrong. So don't worry, don't, don't, don't crack the Bible, correct yourself. But first, proof. And so now that it's announced, he appeals to Rome, and there's a sequel. Well. Uh, he did, he's given his great praise, he's loved greatly, and then he appears before Paul, Pope Paul V in 1660. He's hoping to convince the Pope he's correct, and so he gives it to lectures explaining why he's correct. And the Pope gets alarmed and disturbed by what he said. He wants to say the Bible's wrong and the Bible because of that. And so he calls it for the Inquisition. Let me pause here. Because the Inquisition is not important. The Inquisition today is actually still around there. It is. There's like a different name. Actually, the price has been changed now. Excuse me. It's changed last year about the friends. Excuse me. Now it's the cat and the party. So the, the Castery for the Doctor and the Faith. It used to be called the CDF, Cargate for the Doctor and the Faith. Um, now it's the Castery, because Francis changed the name. Um, Pope Francis changed the name recently. Uh, but now it's the Castery for the Doctrine of Faith. What is the Inquisition? Get very briefly and do a whole class on this. <laughs> the Inquisition was started in the 16th century as a response to heresy. Um, and they were to look at writings and opponents of Catholics who were growing heresy. Um, where people will get confused is they'll say that the Catholic Church did torture. And the answer is yes and no. Um, one thing to note is there are documented cases, several of them, 
um, where people in the ordinary prisons would deliberately say something suspect to out of hand ordinary prisons get in hand the Inquisition. Because the Inquisition was much kind of gentler than the ordinary prisons. I mean, the, the problem was that the time all the prisons the Inquisition was not only unusual, it was not unusual. The Inquisition was more gentle than the ordinary prisons. It was so harsh. Everyone was harsh. Was there torture? Yes. But not what we think about it. Um, The thing is, one of the one of the things that the law of time wanted to say was wanted to say every case had a confession. So that rather than just basing a condemnation upon um, rather than basing a condemnation on on hearsay or the people who wanted the prisoner. To, con to confess himself, he died. And so, when it was a case of very serious crime, uh, when it was evident, proven, that the person was guilty, they would at times make the best of the It was sort of a punishment rather than a, um, a, a way to get a confession. If we get a confession, there was a dark group. Uh, it would be like a jury had condemned a murderer, the one who had the same murder as well. So, so it wasn't really said it, he made a portrait. It, it, it was a punishment, it was part of it. Does this make it right? I don't know, it's probably too much more argument think so. Um, but it's not quite the same thing as making things up. It's not the same thing as torture for fun. And again, it was kinder in the secular prisons all across Europe and around the world. This was a very common occurrence. Um, and there were rules in place the church had that was not different for us. The other thing was there was no doubt. Um, now, if there was a certain crime unworthy of death penalty, they would hand it over to the civil authorities. Let the civil authorities decide to do. But the church are killed. Um, the fact is, if you remember as well, the Pope at that time was also a king. For historical reasons, going back to the sixth century, the Pope was ruling not only spiritually, but was ruling the third of it. Most of it was under his jurisdiction. This goes back to Gregory the Great. The Roman emperors had pulled out of Rome, they were banned in Rome, they were state. And Gregory the Great cared for people, no one else would. And so the Pope, for, for, for over a thousand years, had been an earthly king as well as spiritual ruler. And so he does have a, um, an arm of authority. Look at heresies, which were in the Catholic Church and which were, which were involved in um, Did the church or did the Inquisition only look into heresies of Catholic yes. members, or yes. were there other people that were not Catholic? Nope. At the time? Only Catholics. Only Catholics. Um, where people get confused about this in Spain, um, part of the reason why the Spanish are going to condemn is in Spain, a number of people, so for 700 years, Spain has been under Muslim mm -hmm. policy. And over the course of 700 years, and many more years, over time, and for the long, long war, won back the territory of the Muslims. And when they finalized their conquest in the 1480s, um, a number of Muslims and Jews converted all of a sudden. And because they were just in the civility, there was fear that some of them were only pretending to convert. Which but we're doing so the purpose of supporting the The purpose of pretending and the purpose of the war. 
And so it wasn't simply the fact that they're under their parents' feet, it was the fact that it's been treasonous and not for the purpose of trying to bring back the promise. And so the Spanish government and the Spanish religion worked together. Uh, they've been examining these people, so many of them who did convert just for uh, political reasons, to see if what they were saying was true. Um, but even that's gone in black eye. Um, Again, if you were Jewish, they Jewish, they Muslim, you left alone. It was people who were Catholic who were promoting heresy that they were men. Um, especially when the suspect that they were doing so to undermine them. Um, that's where you get the issue with and some of them about Even there, the English should never the death penalty. If, if you were some of the treasonous, you hand it over to civil authorities. And all this, it's still taking this to the court, but the laws torture. Uh, it must be more to condemn, in which case it was more of a, a punishment to get the confession of what it was believed. And in Spain, we had several cases where the people who were in ordinary prisons would try to get themselves brought to the because it was less harsh. Like, who was the uh, So, I mean, we look at this today and we need to say, well, this, this is ridiculous, this is false. There was also cultural time, right? This is everywhere. This, this, was, this, was, this was every part of the culture. Um, it was not seen as wicked or bad. It was just where the prison systems were. Am I glad they were born? Well, yes. But in the context of what was going on, this was a lot better. The Inquisition examined it. It's not under torture, it's not under threat, it's not under duress. It's a conversation. And after this conversation, they say, you know, Galileo, yeah, forget this. And they condemn him, and they say, can't teach any more, don't teach this, your professor, shut up about this. It doesn't have to retract anything. He still has his writings, so I'm not told his writings are sexual fine. He just told us not teaching this. Shut up. And he promises. He's given no penance, he's given nothing happens to him except that this point he's told, just shut up. You know, just take go of it, basically. And he promises. This book is examined and it is given a a, a condemnation sort. It's given the condemnation of a donek. Rigator. Which means, don't print it unless you change it. It's not saying, it, don't print it unless it's changed. If it were a wholly bad, false book, that wouldn't get this. Yeah, so it would be, it would be a different done. This is basically something, there's some errors in there, it's problematic, but they're, you correct them as well. In 1620, it's only four years later, the Inquisition says, okay, you can, you can teach how the centuries have only as a theory. And so this is a general example of other scientists, right? And they say, look, there's no proof of this one. And there's not. At this point, there is no proof. And so they teach as a theory, you don't teach it as, as fact, you don't try to put a Bible over it. And, and they don't condemn the Copernicus's writings get amended a little bit, but only where he seems to teach. Teach with too enthusiastic about it, but, but they're good college. At this point, Orbele is a really good friend of Galileo's. He writes letters to him calling him my son and my brother. In 1624, when Galileo goes to Rome, he gives the one of the Pope is Cardinal. The, the, by the new cardinal, is how he's the Pope. And the Pope gives him a pension. He basically puts him up on his own dime, the same room. Which is something that was very unusual. Um, this was a very long. This is the Pope basically saying, he's my buddy, he's my friend, he's a great scientist, he knows what he's talking about. And Galileo himself, the Inquisition didn't really bother him. He basically was a little bit by it. Um, he's 
So it gives you quite a bit on the side, it's kind of ignored. But, but it's, it's not, the economy would die now. For the view of the law. In 1632, Elliot published a book of diagrams on this theory. In this theory, there are these three figures, one of which is named Idiot, who is the proponent for those who are against him. Um, and in this, basically, he's mocking everybody else. He's breaking his promise, he's swore, he swore to reach again. Um, and he's, but he's mocking those who hold this to any of the three of his. Again, no. And some people say this is actually kind of an open mockery of Pope, who, who was the, the scientist of the midst of all the He was a scientist, a Believe it very much, in the theory of Jesus and a good friend of Galileo's, and he sees this as a betrayal, as a mock. So you have now a scientist who is a good friend of his, stabbing in the back, lying on the road, and then publicly making fun of So it's called back to the position. And while he is there because of this, he, he is found suspect of heresy. So not a heretic, not condemned, but suspect. In other words, you're, you're trying to cross the lines here, buddy. And he is imprisoned sort of, right? Three years penance and seven years of it. Basically, that was a malady. It, it wasn't uh, taken seriously. He really had to do it. Um, the uh, the thing about the threat of torture that was part of the proceedings. Pope forbade it in this case entirely. Um, it, it was this walk was part of the proceedings. It wasn't a real, a real serious threat. It, it was this part of, of, the, of the words used as part of the procedure. It was mentioned. Then her house arrests give a couple of villa, and apparently Galilee went to cover it. And so while he's there, he's dealt with the right, he's able to receive visitors, the Pope does a stipend every year. What's the difference between a stipend and a pension? Um, so my understanding is a stipend is a continuous thing, a pension is only for a short time. Uh, the, the pension was only for the time he was visiting Rome when he was traveling, the stipend is the rest of his life. As the Pope is supporting him, he's allowed to write, he's allowed to be visitors, he's allowed to... And when he's dying, the Pope gives him a blessing. At the same time, contemporaries of his were teaching remotely in the same thing. If you go back and look at some of the other famous astronomers of the time, the Roman Catholics, and the Roman priests, they were teaching this at the same period. The two great discoveries of lunar seas, for example, happened at this time. The discoveries of that there was two Jesuit priest scientists who were looking at how it would be possible, and basically they anticipated. And they say, well, it's possible that perhaps that, that the Earth is moving in the, in the sense it's falling toward the sun kind of thing, which is what it's happening. Um, and by the end of the century, it's being, you know, we have proofs being taught that this theory is being taught in the foreign missions with China and Japan. The Jesuits are teaching this elsewhere in other countries. The bring this forward as great science, as a scientific theory of that. So it's being condemned as really a theory. It's really the science for being a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Inquisition is never infallible. These kind of based on infallible. Uh, these never seen infallible. It's never taught infallible. It was. It, it, it is a question of prudence and a question of really politics. So what's going on here? Um, the bottom line is this. Was this a fine moment in church history? No. It was. Is it a people think it is? No, it wasn't. Um, what you have here is not a story of the church being anti-science. You have here the story 
a bunch of very stubborn men bickering and short. Who was Galileo under the jurisdiction of politically? Politically, it would have been, it was, it was a teacher at Florence, so it would have, would have been the kingdom of Florence. Um, which, which, depending on the era, I had to go back and forth all the time. But I believe they were kind of rivals of, of the papal states. Uh, but politically, he would have been. Um, the, I want to say he retired so he was or was a house arrest or something. Uh, but house oh. arrest loose firm. And he's not in the guard, he's not too long. He, he's basically staying in the middle of the night. Right in peace. <laughs> but, but this isn't, you know, this was never seen as a. It is true, Galileo's work does stay up on the index of written books until 787. Mostly it's because it wasn't it wasn't people saying. You know, the, the yeah, it, it was more of a little swab than it is. The final question here that I would look at is was Galileo actually correct? Like the whole thing is very science, kind of theories, and maybe he's this lone ranger in the midst of all these things. Not exactly. Not exactly. He was right, but not exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. One encyclopedia says this, and it says, of all the popular mind, Galileo is number chief is the strong. It was not in here that he actually made some kind of point of view to This is testified by the courts of Sagan, Lorego, and Galanga. He's actually, there's a lot more than the mechanics, especially the dynamics, which said it's either the oldest. In other words, as an astronomer, he's not. His series later on are proving a vault of series of other he's, he's taking on this popular image because it's just taken on a great big controversy. Um, became a, a, a very progressive of propaganda, was used to prove the church was wrong for the last several hundred years. It was used to condemn the church. And it was taken on this image of this figure of this kind of this smarter, smarter of a scientist who staunchly was correct and then by the authorities, but simply didn't end. In actuality, he was not as important a field as he was. Johannes Kepler, Tycho Brahe, Francis um, Bidet, they were a lot more to do with these theories. They were the contemporaries a lot more to do with astronomy and with this. Part of this was that he had no proof whatsoever. Everything before this proof has been disproved. All the stuff that he saw as showing his model um, have later on been seen to be wrong. So his model was incorrect. And his proof was false. Even Isaac Newton at the, at the time when Galileo died, Right at the summit, said he's convinced. But as a part of the condemnation he received was because he wasn't convinced. He wasn't convinced as a scientist about this. The other stuff he was, right? He was a good looking scientist. When it came to these, these theories, it wasn't seen as convincing or, 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 or scientifically accurate. And they were all going to be false. As a matter of fact, when it came to other scientists at the time, he ignored Kepler. Uh, Kepler had put forward two of his three laws at that point. He was right in 1610. And doesn't even acknowledge Ty Tycho Brahe's um, model of the universe. Tycho Brahe put forward a similar model at the same time. And again, that is acknowledged. Um, Tycho Brahe's model is a lot more accurate, is more correct. But these people are ignored um, because he was great. He's just part of this too. He held false beliefs about the tides. Um, and comments. 
He believed the tides were proof of the earth moving. And he was told that it has to do with the moon. He laughed at them and said, you're idiots. No, I'm right. Um, he thought comets were like meteors and, and uh, you know. He was wrong. You know, part of his model here, the reason why I was wrong, was he believed what we came to call epicycles. Um, he believed that the evolution of the planets wasn't a straight circle, but was kind of a... In order to account for something from dynamic disease. Part of the issue was he didn't understand how, how, how the distance is involved. And so when you observe some of these things, you'll notice that planets connect up to each other and stars cross each other because they're really far away. But he believed that the revolution of, of the planets went kind of like this. No. <laughs> um, and you can kind of make this model work sort of as it breaks down at the end. You can kind of sort of make it work. This was his proposal, his epicycle. Yeah, that's why his model doesn't work, that's why his model was wrong. Uh, so, yes, he was correct that the Earth moved, the star was the center of the universe. But his model was wrong, he didn't take into account the other scientific theories, and he was so invisible. And then he tied this to Scripture. Right? So he tried to interpret Scripture based upon this. He said, you have to change your kind of Bible based upon me. So I'm right. So how is... How is saying something that extreme about scriptures not have him be at odds with the church? Well, he was. But th 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 that's why he was condemned. Because you said he was in good standing, right? He was because he was tracked. Right? Both things in 1633, he was tracked both. Right? I mean, so, so in 1633, when he was brought before the Inquisition, he said, oh, I've never taught that before in life, but I, people misunderstood me. This is a theory I'm holding. I don't really believe it. I'm just having dying wrong. But I, I really believe in you saying it. <clears throat> other, people, other people believe that. You know, not me. Um, but again, we went back and looked at it. People said, that's the, 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 the fortune sold sick man. He was afraid. But that's why he said these things. But, no, yeah. Um, but that's why it was connect was because of what saying was true. It wasn't the science. It wasn't. It wasn't. The, it was because interpreting the right. You had to this, and you had it became involved with the science because of what, because of his character. The science had to drag into it. So Copernicus uh, writings were amended, but it wasn't that they were dealing. It wasn't being taught. People were teaching it and, and working on it and studying. The problem was Galileo was trying to prescription. So he was okay in good standing with the church to be lying. <laughs> Basically, he was willing to say he was wrong. So he was publicly saying this position is not proper. And I think what we're also seeing is it was complicated in that yeah. he was friends with the hierarchy. Of so. trying to. So it wasn't black and white. Yeah, so that's what politics, right? Because you have people who are personal friends who are playing Oh, yeah, I still never understand that. <laughs> 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 that's how it works. Yeah, you're friends. Like, I'm so sorry. That's probably just the person here. Well, okay. <laughs> and part of it has to be about, you know, we you have to be a court system. You have to say face and look honorable. And so you have somebody mocking you publicly. Have to correct that, otherwise it undermines your authority. Right? And so you can find a person with somebody that still not still, still, still respect the position. I want to say face. And so by getting condemned, the Pope is saying face. The Pope is making sure he's not, he's, he's also the king. Um, is this a bad thing? Yeah, probably. You know, this is the best use of that in time. You know, there are better ways to handle this. And it was most definitely a different political government structure than we currently have. Yes. And so there's accommodations there of how this played out. There wasn't Twitter 
you get updates right. instantly. And then you have to subtract the Galileo. Galileo is a great scientist. A good man in many ways. He also was a Catholic to the God of King Knox. He could have been a terrible guy. Probably a little bit like Bill Nye. A lot of people know who he is. He's a scientist. He's a scientist. When they speak outside their areas of expertise, that's where not necessarily as useful. As a matter of fact, Bill Nye is in that great scientist. Yeah, he's, he's a popular man. He's a popular scientist, but. He makes the news. Makes the news. Like, you know what else funny? You know who Dolph Lundgren is? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. He's he, really smart. He has he has, he's a, a better scientist, more degrees than Bill Nye. Does he have like four degrees or yeah, something yeah, from yeah, MIT? Yeah, yeah. Like chemistry yeah. and yeah, yeah, he's very very smart. But he's seen as this big dumb group. <laughs> Bill Nye, the bachelor, is he's, I mean, he's, he's a great speaker and a lot of fun. He's popular with all things. I'm not fun. I don't against him. Well, but scientifically, did Dolph Lundgren. start like it's just a children's. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's he right. did a thing about science for little kids. Right. Then became popular. And, yeah. And so he, it's what did he the guy. It's great to do it. But he speaks it. Like many of us, if you've got expertise, run the truck. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like when you, you see, you know, movie stars trying to the politics or philosophy oh, yeah. or, you know, yes. that's Galileo. <laughs> So he was this rock star scientist who took our taboos. And because of Italian politics, he got a troll. You know. Um, one author writes this, what I people would say. Well, Berger's text on Truth Bar, when he said that this savant is genius, the pursuit of position, not the gift of song, but the bad below them. Was <laughs> it is not that certain. This is certain words. Be more critical, conservative, and literally they find a pill publicly. If you have like, there's a man that strongly who would not have lived and avoided the rank for a bitch he was all there. But all the friends of Galilee advised him in vain to intend himself to sign the demonstrations and for the demand of scriptures. The church was wrong, he then became a guy was not so much on account of the the system he taught was the cause to get stronger and turn into the world. Again, so the story is a story of the church against truth and science. It's the story of human stubbornness and politics. But it's going to be used against the church. It sounds like what's happening throughout all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every single era. And again, it's not like the church is a perfect hero, obviously. We have yeah, some stuff here being done that was that was stupid. That that was done up you know, beyond their competency probably. But it's complicated. People are complicated. Um, but just, just again, I think it's important for us to read and see this because you, you will find this. You will read, you will hear, you'll be told the church is backwards, the church is foolish, the church has no science. Not the Galileans. Don't be afraid of this accusation. No one was being said. No one was being done. No one no Galileo was. A Galileo was not part of the same. He was not tortured. He was not imprisoned the rest of his day. He didn't go blind from torture. People said that too. <laughs> um, he didn't go blind, but that was because he told him. He didn't go blind from torture. Um, Italian politics. And he was wrong. Right? I mean, he was sort of right, but he was wrong enough for his theory to be decided to death. Going back to the scriptures, let me at least talk back. Thoughts on that? So we get it. An unusual class, but it's important. Going back to the scriptures, then, going back to Joshua. How do we understand this? Then? How do we understand this, like what God is saying? To be Mr. Sullivan being said. How do we understand the fact that the book of Joshua says the sun stood still, the moon stood still? Does this conflict with 
that what is or is one approach literary analysis of what is physically written in the style? That's one approach. Yeah. So elaborate. That's as far as I can. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what does that look like? So, not knowing the original text, but examining it and examining the tone, the style of writing, what the author is trying to convey, and that gets complicated over time with translations, interpretation, mistranslation, miscopying, um, and so we have that realm. Yeah, I'd also say, I mean, even simpler than that, um, all that's being said really is this is what was observed. Who who watch the sun rise and sun? You did? You did? You did? You're liars. I know. The sun did not rise. <laughs> the earth spun. Don't say that. the sun rise, and that's what we observe, right? We observe that. It's described as sun rise. It's described as the sunset. Does that mean we're all, are, are all geocentrics? You don't believe geocentrics are all that scientists are fools? No. It means that you're describing what you see, and this, this is what a human is going to be. If the sun stands still in the heavens, and says, light for 48 hours, is it possible it happened through some other means and the sun standing still? Yes. Is it possible it happened through simply the light shown for a while? Yeah. Is it possible it happened through a miracle with what the, the sun appeared to stand still in one area? Yes. Is it possible that there's some other light in the sky? Yes. That doesn't really matter in the cats. Not really. What's being said is this is what was observed. Is the point of the scripture passage the mechanic how this happened? No. Right? The book of Joshua is not is not that physical. It's not a strong text. It's not the truth. And it is truthful, it's that it actually occurred. The sun didn't stand still. The sun it was day of 20 or 40 hours. Whether that was the entire world, whether it was in the one spot in the valley, I don't know. I think, for example, the miracle of the sun, I can say it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do people know what this is happening here? Yeah. 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 No. In Fatima, I can say So, later Fatima, I can say Portugal. Um, promised October 13th, I can say uh, promised the three children, the Sita, the Son, and Lucia, she would prove who she was. Over 70,000 people gathered in this one area of Portugal. And then they observed, oh, of course, it rained very hard, and it was so bad. And they observed the sun that had a spin, a circle, and it appeared all over the earth. People cried aloud, praying on their knees. And the sun back in the heavens, when they, and the, when they finished, the mud was dry, the clothes were dry. Fifty miles away, people observed the same thing before the newspapers. But the, but sixty miles away, they didn't. But mm -hmm. fifty miles around, people observed this. Whether you were Catholic or not Catholic, whether you were, you were, it was, it was observed in photograph, and there are news articles talking about the event in the secular public news. About everyone in the world saw. So did the sun actually spin and fall? Well, no, because it's only observed that one area. Did people observe it to look like that? Yes. What were the mechanics? Was it something that happened to their eyes and their brains? Was it an illusion? Well, it could be an illusion because, again, there was actual heat that happened. Was it an angel? Yeah. <laughs> All I can tell you is the sun danced and it appeared to fall and it did. It was observed by these 8,000 people, 7,000 people in one valley and whatever many people were around the earth. I suspect that's what happened with the story of Joshua. But can I prove it now? What's um, the theory you're going? I think I'm going. <laughs> it, 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 it seems to make sense to me that there's a similar phenomenon which is beyond scientific capacity. Um, 
you know, to Europe. It didn't affect people. You know, no one, you know, people say, well, the Earth could have stood still because the Earth would have been destroyed. Yes, that's, that's the truth. And the sun couldn't have danced to fall toward the Earth literally. Uh, you know, but the truth that. The book of the Bible is not here to teach us astronomy. Because just for who God and what he said. Does that make it false? No. It's describing what was observed. And describing it in a way that people understand. In the same way you describe the sunset. The sun rose this morning at 6 32 p.m. PM? Thing. The sun rose the sunset. You can call it sunset. But the sun is the sun. <laughs> <laughs> you know. The earth moves. The earth moves. And so the Bible is not written to describe the astronomical phenomenon. It's accurate, it's true. It's a shroud that was observed and was seen. The mechanics aren't that important. And it's focused on the mechanics like Galileo did, and he listened to the man at the problems. Um, he focused instead of promise being set. And the point of the story is to the point is man in the center of things. Because for the ones being saved, God became man. The point of the story is God walked from his people and saved us. The point of the story is God wars against sin and evil and transforms them. This is Paul. The science is beautiful. The science is true. The science is from God. Science is always true. Um, one last thing to note, and then we'll end. Many earlier than all you doubters. I said it a long time. You were just uh, really, really excited about the talk. <laughs> um, one last point just that is important about science. Practically speaking. Over there, put it over there. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. Faith. <laughs> 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 If it's true faith and real science, you can never contradict. Because both have the same source. The God who creates the universe is the God who created everything. God who the things. The God who wants to know him is the God who made the world. So true faith and real science will never contradict, period. If there is an apparent contradiction, it means I misunderstood my faith or the science is wrong. And what this means that as Catholics, no matter, never be, don't ever be afraid of the science. Never worry about any scientific theory. Never wonder about it. We're saying, if science says this, that I can't leave my faith. Or I have to deny this scientific development because it's in front of the Bible. Both of them. Let me be a contradiction. There might be apparent contradiction. It's either going to be because the science is mistaken, or you're missing something about the faith. And this is true of any kind of scientific discovery or uh, theory or um, historically, historically there isn't been one that's been proven. I mean, there are theories out there 
other dark proof of that that couldn't contradict. If there is out there contested that that's, that, that seem to contradict, they're contested for a reason. After they've been proven, so I say, well, there that has been contradictory to scriptures today. Um, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to, to, to be a good science. Don't be afraid of no science. Don't tell you strongly to study any kind of study of fear. It's all from God. It's all made by God. Truth is part of truth. And I can personally witness to this. Um, my background is science. Um, I was a materials engineering student at New Mexico Tech. Um, my professor um, was the head of the Department of Metallurgy, and she worked for Los Alamos National Labs building nuclear weapons and such. Um, and when she retired, um, she had very strong faith, maybe not in the right direction necessarily all the time. Um, I believe Anglican or Episcopalian, um, but she quit her job with Los Alamos and such in doing that work to become a minister. So, uh, just totally different direction in her life. Uh, several of my other professors were, uh, were at church with me all the time uh, in the materials department. There was never a conflict on deep science and their faith. The more you look into something scientifically, you come to this point where you realize there's the physical world and there's the metaphysical world. Science can only talk about the physical world, it does not speak to the metaphysical world. And they are in awe and wonder the more they learn, the deeper they delve into something they know for sure. They, we cannot examine this in this way. You have to approach it from faith. I had a microbiology professor, first day of class, PhD, he drew a simple cell on the board and he said, the more I study a simple organism like this, the more I realized it couldn't have happened randomly. And that was the only thing he said, and then he went on to teach the rest of the class. And it all was yeah. There's a cabinet author, for instance, in, in, the, in this. He wrote a book on this. His name is Dr. Stephen Barr. He's a physicist by background. Uh, I think he's over the University of Iran, I believe. Um, but he wrote a book on science and faith. I forget the name of, of the book, but Stephen Barr is his name. Um, I actually met the guy. Interesting guy, father of 10 kids, strong Catholic. Um, but he wrote a book and he a bunch of scientific. Uh, part of the list I gave you that the pre scientists from him. He works with what's called the Magis, Magis uh, Society, trying especially to work with high school students to prove that faith and reason are compatible. Uh, they are contradictory. Um, but he's a physicist by back by, by background. He's, he's a, a doctor of physics. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I think that is really more the more the real lesson learned here in terms of faith and science it is that don't be afraid of it. Don't worry about it. Um, but don't, don't if you're, if you're a theologian, try to speak on science of ears. <laughs> <laughs> and vice versa. Right? I mean. Could it also be like right now, we have political um, pressures to just accept theories without proof because sure. they're popular. Like right. Instead of actually having scientific proof. Right. Right, and, and there are very strong debates. I can think of the whole thing with climate change. Um, <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the problem is not being a scientist. scientist. Um, all I know is that scientists, who seem to be, on both sides of the argument, to be, be very, very strong authorities and very strong big degrees, and big names. You know, the scientists say, they'll say it's totally. There's no doubt whatsoever. This is what's going on. I have people who say, no, he's totally wrong. He's talking about this or two You know that and the top um, graph that they, I forget who did that, uh, where it shows supposedly, you know, since the industrial age, the CO2 levels are going up and up and up. A lot of the data from the scrubbed so that it's very, very skewed. Mm -hmm. And there are times on this planet where the CO2 levels were much, much higher than they are now. I'm not saying we should pollute. Right. 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 And, and the challengers were not 
you know, rising and rising. And if you ever, you know Michael Crichton? He wrote a really good book called State of Fear, where politically it's expedient to keep people in a constant state of panic and yeah. fear because they can control you better. Yeah. Whether you know, climate they, change is a thing or not, yeah. we don't have to accept communism. Yes. <laughs> 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 But there is argument. I, I should sleep on science. So we shouldn't take a class from you. <laughs> Start teaching a class on climate change or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or at least a lot of salt in that. <laughs> yeah. Theology, scripture study is sure. Um, probably at least a lot of philosophy too, morality. But yeah, probably not on things like, you know, Astronomy or metallurgy. <laughs> oh, that's a huge topic of structure. Uh, <laughs> Are you a metallurgist? That is like so interesting. I've been trained, but I've not worked in the field. <laughs> yeah, probably not IT. Probably not going to talk about IT either as a standard <laughs> test. <laughs> that's just my hobby. <laughs> So perhaps, so remember against yeah, politics and the, so the, she was, um, what year was it? So it was 1432, okay. um, so I'm going to go back, so around that. Um, there were a hundred years wars between France and England, that trying to figure out who was the king, mm -hmm. um, and got married, and, and he sent her to bark to secure the English out of France. Um, and there's complicated laws back there. But once Joan of Arc conquered the English and they were sent back in, and the king of France saw his problem, the French betrayed her solely to the English. And out of pure pettiness and anger at her, because she was the cause of the downfall, um, they basically took up charge with her and um, lied about her for her sake because they're bad. And that didn't happen. It was, it was done by a panel of bishops. But it was done legally. The charges were proved false. I mean, she was hanged, and I just thought long after that. But yeah, basically, they wanted to discredit her entirely. It wasn't enough to simply say she was a political enemy, they wanted to make her heretic. So they did things like they made her promise to stop dressing as a man. Took away all of her girl clothes. The tag dressed the man with her name. And they said, see, she's a liar, she's a witch, she's, she's you know, she was treated more It wasn't the church that was okay. It, it, it was done by bishops. Um, oh. um, and so, because, because they wanted to discredit her. Oh, okay. But it was done in the name of the English case. It wasn't done in the name of the church. It was done, so, it was, but yes, a panel of English bishops and And when she was burned to stay, the heart was abrupt. And it threw her in the river of crowd in it. Uh, uh, her heart was interrupted in the river? Uh -huh. And it wasn't burned up? Uh -huh. So they threw it in the river. You know, rather than taking a sign on, maybe there's something going on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it is a fascinating story, again, of, of human weakness in politics. Other pressure put on by the king and by some really nasty bishops, other bishops. Um, this is the politics, nasty. And, and not that movies ever get every scene. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if you want to read a good book on that, Mark Twain wrote this is one of the best books. It's a popular book. He was, he was an atheist. But he wrote a very science, a very sort of accurate book on it. See, this is one of the best. Uh, Mark Twain, I'm going to work on what happened in the trial. 
No sitting dark when we go. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I brought some candy. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Glad you're going Thank to you. see it. Thank you. But yeah, I'll be Mark Twain's book on that. Easy reading that is accurate from the night I've heard. I've heard still one of the best see. books in the world. Um, and he did Mark Twain of all of his um, religious antagonists considered very wise heroes. I did like uh, his quote of paraphrasing um, uh, experience is a great teacher, but fools learn no other way. Any other questions? Let's end the wrong time for us. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this conversation and this time together. We thank you for guiding us closer to you. Help us understand this your Bible better and more respect. We all that we say and we be for your glory. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall. World without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.